Hi everybody, welcome to Matthew Crandall Reviews. Today I'm taking a look at the new flick, Crimson Peak, directed by Guillermo del Toro. Now Universal Pictures is marketing this as a Halloween haunted house ghost story. Uh, it's coming out in October. It's in IMAX. The trailers are everywhere. There's not going to be any spoilers in this review other than the stuff we see in the trailer. But needless to say, Universal has kind of tried to trick you a little bit. Because Guillermo del Toro will be the first one to tell you, Crimson Peak is not a horror movie. It's a gothic romance. Now, what's a gothic romance? Well, I went to a master class with Guillermo at TIFF where he showed... Uh, David Lean's Great Expectations, Hitchcock's Rebecca, uh, and Jane Eyre. Um, basically, these great gothic romances that are melodramatic with great huge vistas and fantastic cinematography, great costumes, and a lot of them feature scary sort of stuff. Maybe a little bit supernatural, maybe not. Um, he draws a lot from Hitchcock, Rebecca, I already mentioned Notorious. Uh, Withering Heights, all these different sources, and he sort of mashed it into this thing called Crimson Peak that is very entertaining, but it is not a horror movie. So first and foremost, if you're expecting ghosts all the time, this is not a ghost story. It's a story with ghosts. Um, it is definitely slower paced, but it's so rich with detail. The cinematography in this is off the charts. The production design is incredible. The house, Allerdale Hall at Crimson Peak, is just one of the great movie sets of all time. It's fantastic around every corner. The detail is incredible. And it's got lots of Guillermo staples. Insects, creepy ghosts that are demented and deformed. Um, and it really is sort of his love letter to these old Hammer films or gothic romances from the 30s, 40s, and that kind of thing. So if you're looking for something that's new and fresh, that basically takes inspiration from all of these older things that have been done before, Guillermo really spins a nice, interesting tale. Uh, it stars Mia Wasikowska as Edith Cushing, uh, this beautiful young thing who is won over by Thomas Sharp, who is played by Tom Hiddleston. Uh, he falls head over heels in love with her, and wants to whisk her away to Crimson Peak. Uh, now, when she was younger, she saw a ghost of her mother who told her, Beware of Crimson Peak. So, of course, when she moves to, to London, uh, she does not know that this place is actually called Crimson Peak. And that's where the movie really starts to sort of take a shift. Uh, the first half of the movie, fantastic, really great. It's got some decent, like, Pride and Prejudice sort of moments. Um, where there's a great waltz scene and you're just taking in the production design because it's on such a scale. It's just a gorgeous looking movie. We've got Jim Beaver, who's great as Mia Wasikowska's dad, Edith's father. Um, Jim, one of my favorites from Supernatural and Deadwood. And he's just great here as the, the doubting father who's not really sure who Tom Hiddleston is and why this guy is falling for his daughter. And then, of course, there's a couple of murders and stuff happens. Uh, Jessica Chastain is Hiddleston's sister. And they kind of have a, an air of mystery about them. And we're not quite sure what's going on there. But Guillermo pulls you in slowly with this nice yarn that's being told where we're in a world where ghosts exist. But that's not the main focus of this story. It's just about this young girl who then falls in love with this strange suitor, gets taken to his his big mansion um, that is in ruin and decay. And the ruin and decay just makes Crimson Peak so unique. The house is just like a house from Great Expectations where Mrs. Haversham was in there. And it's this dusty old thing. But this is falling apart. There's a big hole in the roof. Uh, and the house reflects the horrible and in horrible inhabitants of it. Uh, because Tom Hiddleston and Jessica Chastain maybe aren't quite what they appear to be. And they are kind of these disgusting, gross, broken people. Um, but what I really liked was it's just very slow, methodically paced. And when they get to Crimson Peak, the production design is so off the charts. The ghosts are awesome and cool. And there is some decent gore. Uh, lots of symbolism. It almost ties in with Guillermo's Devil's Backbone. And it does feel more like his Spanish work. So if you have the patience 
And especially if you do some of the research or if you already love gothic romance and all of these great Hammer films and stuff, there's so much stuff that he draws from that it really just pulls you in. And the performances from everyone across the board are great. The music is fantastic. Like I said, in IMAX, the cinematography is top notch. So just a movie that there are so many layers to where it might not be the most original story of all time and certainly lacks a little bit in the scare department and doesn't have as many ghosts as I would have liked. But if you're just looking for something creepy, beautiful, and unique, you can't go that wrong with Crimson Peak as long as you know what you're getting into. So if you've seen Crimson Peak, hit up the comments, let me know if you liked it, if you hated it, where it ranks on Guillermo's list of movies for you. I love him. I think this is sort of middle road overall. It's not as fun as Pacific Rim and not as badass as Blade 2 and certainly not quite as uniquely visionary as the Hellboy movies, but it is just him writing a love letter to the movies that he grew up loving and you can just feel that joy off the screen into your eyeballs. It's just a great time. Uh, so thanks a lot for watching and don't forget to hit subscribe.